Who's really flying your airplane? The pilot or the autopilot? I'll explain it all. Coming up. Hey 74 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel 74 Gear is all about aviation. Today I'm here in Anchorage, Alaska. I know I come here a lot, but this is the view from my hotel room. It's very common for people to make the assumption that the autopilot is doing all the work. And while the technology for this continues to improve, it's not quite there yet for it to do everything. In this video, I'm going to explain when the autopilot is flying the plane and when the pilot is flying the plane. Let's get into it. As you walk onto the aircraft, most people tend to look into the cockpit. Well, at least I do. Nerd! And usually you'll see the pilots are up there smashing a bunch of buttons into the computer and what we're actually doing is loading up the route that we're going to be flying. So that way the autopilot knows exactly where we're going and we get a picture on our screens which let us know this is the route that air traffic control is expecting us to fly. And you'll notice that the pilots have their charts out and they may be talking about different things about the flight and it's actually one of the busiest times for us when you're getting on the aircraft. Now once that main cabin door is closed to the aircraft, the flight attendants will usually come up to us, ask us if we need anything, give us any additional information that we need before we take off, and then we'll get onto our flight. And we get to start doing the stuff we actually enjoy, which is flying the plane instead of doing paperwork or putting things in the computer. But how much the pilots are actually flying the plane depends on a few different things, and there's quite a few misconceptions out there. I've been thinking about it recently and I've come up with two reasons why there's this misconception that the pilots aren't actually doing anything up there. First, back in the day when I was a kid, we used to get to run up to the flight deck once the plane was in cruise. Once the plane got into the cruise, the captain would make an announcement and say any children, I don't remember what the age limits were, I was probably five, but they could come up and look up in the flight deck. And what you would do is jump out and climb over your parents, get onto the aisle and run up to the flight deck and just pelt questions to the pilots and then usually after three or four they'd get annoyed with you and tell you to go away. Why don't you guys just leave us alone? Gonna... Now during that time the autopilot was obviously on, one pilot would be listening, but the reality was is both pilots would be turned and talking to you even though one guy was talking on the radio which I wasn't really paying attention to, I was just excited to be up there. Unfortunately, thanks to a few special someones, that party is over. Now the only people coming up onto the flight deck are the flight attendants and they're either coming up to bring us food or to relieve us so we can go into the bathroom. So when they come up there, all they're seeing is that one guy has talking on the radio and the other guy's leaving. Obviously, it's not like we're doing a lot of work up there. So that is the only impression that they have when they come up onto the flight deck. So it's reasons like that that I think most people think that we're up there doing nothing except telling inappropriate jokes. I would never do that. And pounding all the good snacks that we stole from the flight attendant's basket, which she had made perfectly and told us not to touch. Guilty as charged. Now I want to tell you a quick story about a time that we had a flight attendant ride up on the flight deck with us. When we do a certain type called a repo flight, which is a repositioning flight, meaning we're moving the aircraft empty without passengers from one city to another city. That could have been because of a maintenance issue, it could have been weather, or it could have just been that that was the original plan that they knew they were going to drop people off and not pick anybody up from that city. When we do those types of flights, often a flight attendant will be able to come up into the flight deck and sit up there during takeoff and landing. Pick me, pick me. Now I really enjoy doing these repo flights because the flight attendants get to really see what it is that we're doing up there. Because what they only see is when we're on the ground and filling out paperwork or typing stuff into our computer or when we're up in cruise and we're not really doing very much. So I think it's very cool that they get to see what actually goes on for takeoff and landing. And I always love as we line up to the runway before we actually take off, I always look at them, make sure that they're ready to go, and I always love that look on their face, it's that ear to ear smile, they are so excited to be up there, and it reminds me just how cool my job is. So in this story, a couple years back, we take off, we get through 10,000 feet, we finish all of our checklists, and I look back and I said, pretty cool, huh? And she said to me, this is maybe one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. I think she was under the impression that all we did is sit up there and do things like pressing take off, then autopilot, then land. She said something else to me I'll never forget. She said, I had no idea how much work you guys were actually doing and now I understand why it's important that we don't call you below 10,000 feet. Next time you're on a flight, I want you to listen through about 10,000 feet. You're going to hear a bell or a ding or a noise and that's the way for the flight attendants to know from the pilots we're through 10,000 feet and out of sterile. Sterile is a term that we use in aviation, which means everything below 10,000 feet is business only. 
There's no unnecessary chatter up on the flight deck or from the flight attendants. So how much the pilots are actually flying the plane depends on a few different things. One of those things is the airport. There are some departures that the aircraft has to fly specific routes on. And during that, the autopilot will usually get turned on around 400 feet or different altitudes pretty low below 1,000 feet depending on the plane that you're flying. And for us, honestly, it's really boring to have to turn on the autopilot at 250 feet when you know that you're gonna be flying the next 12 hours, but rules are rules. Now, if that specific airport or departure doesn't require us to do that, then the pilots will have the option to actually fly the aircraft. Every pilot is different. Some pilots will choose to fly it through 10,000 feet. Some will fly it all the way up to the initial cruise altitude. It really depends. You're making the other pilot do all the radio communication and turn the knobs and do everything else while you're just enjoying flying the plane. It's a little bit of a rude thing. So usually if the air traffic control radio traffic is really heavy, I'll have them engage the autopilot so I can assist with them and we can both be paying attention to everything that's going on if we're looking for other planes or trying to avoid weather, things like that. Now landing is the exact same thing, it depends on the pilot. In my experience, in the smaller aircraft, the pilots are actually hand flying the aircraft a lot more. And in my case, some of the earlier planes that I flew didn't even have autopilot, so I had to hand fly all flight, the whole cruise, take off landing, everything, I had to do all of it. But those smaller aircrafts are a little bit more like hot rods. So air traffic control knows that they can swing them in and make them into tighter turns than what you'd normally see from a larger aircraft. The thing is, is with the autopilot, it's not always very fast to react. So a lot of times, if they're gonna put you on a tight turn or things like that to get you into land, you're gonna have to turn the autopilot off to get the plane to do what you want it to do because it's gonna be moving a lot slower than if you were actually hand flying the aircraft. On landing the aircraft, I would say the average is usually three to five minutes that the pilots actually disconnect and hand fly the aircraft. And even more common than that is probably below 2,000 or 3,000 feet. I typically don't see pilots disconnect the autopilot before that, especially on longer flights. So if you're sitting in the back, how do you know when the pilots have disconnected the autopilot? So there's two real ways to know when the pilots have disconnected the autopilot as you're coming into land. The first is if you're sitting towards the front of the plane, you're going to hear a bell or a whistle or something alerting the pilot that the autopilot has been taken off. The other way to know is if the plane starts doing this, then you know in most cases who's flying. Now it's no surprise with all the time that pilots are spending with flight attendants, we tend to marry them. But what are the other two professions that pilots tend to marry? I talk about it right here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.